Hello there. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the misconceptions surrounding HPV. And one of the misconceptions is that only women can catch HPV. And that's not true. Men can also get HPV. Why I think one of the reasons that that's a misconception is because there's no test to see if men actually carry an HPV infection. And without a test, people sort of think, well, maybe they just don't get it. There's just no way for us to be able to test them right now. Another misconception is that it's rare. I've seen sources say anywhere from 70 to 95% of adults will have at least one HPV strain. And there are over 150 different HPV strains. Only about 12 of them can lead to cervical cancer, and only about 12 of them can lead to genital warts. So just because you have HPV, most likely it could be one of the strains that just doesn't do anything. Another misconception is that it's curable. Unfortunately, once you have an HPV strain, you're going to have it for the rest of your life. Having said that, it doesn't mean it's an active form. Most of us know somebody that has genital herpes or oral herpes. Those aren't always there. Sometimes your body will fight it off and make it dormant. But in extreme cases of stress, it can cause an outbreak. Similar to what can happen with HPV, your body can fight it off. And then maybe decades later, you have a big stressful environment going on and your body's immune system gets weakened and it can actually activate the virus again because your body can't fight it off. So if you fight it off, most likely it will stay dormant, but it can get reactivated again later in life. Another misconception is that the vaccine's not good for you. Vaccines are there for a reason, to help your body fight off certain things. And with the HPV vaccine, it helps fight off, depending on which type you get, around nine strains of HPV. It's a mixture of the different types that can cause cervical cancer or the warts. The cervical cancer, two of the strains that are covered are subtypes 16 and 18. 16 and 18 alone cause about 70% of the cervical cancers. So just having the vaccine greatly decreases your chances of getting cervical cancer but it doesn't eliminate it. You still need to have your pap smears done because it doesn't get rid of and help your body fight off all of the different strains that can cause cervical cancer. So please still continue getting your pap smears and checking to make sure that nothing's going on. If you do have HPV, it doesn't lead to cervical cancer in all cases. So if you have HPV, most likely you're not gonna get cancer. Most people, healthy individuals, in one to two years will fight off that infection and lead to no bad outcomes. It's just some of us, I say us because I am a can cervical cancer survivor, our bodies can't fight it off and after a peri long period of time it will lead to changes in your, your cells that causes cancer and then slowly they just keep on going. I will get to that in another video coming up later. Another misconception is that it only causes cervical cancer. And that, again, is not correct. HPV can cause not just female genital cancers, but also can cause male genital cancers. It can cause anal cancer and also anything that has to do with the mouth and the throat. It can cause cancers orally as well. There are some reports that because of new sexual practices around the world, anal cancers and especially oral cancers are going to become increasingly seen. And eventually they're thinking that oral cancer can actually surpa surpass cervical cancer for the number one cancer caused by HPV. Another misconception is, and this is something that I suffered from, is 
when you find out somebody has HPV, a lot of the times people automatically see, assume that you're sleeping around with a lot of people. And I can tell you from personal experience that is it's not always the case and sometimes far from the fact. It doesn't mean that you sleep with a number of people. Sometimes all it takes is that one person and that's all. And condoms and other t types of protection aren't 100% safe from protecting you. All you need is skin to skin contact. If it's a little bit around the edges or if it's a little bit outside or anything, all you need is that skin to skin and that increases your chances. So you can technically be a virgin, but have HPV. If you're in a monogamous relationship and you've been with your significant other for 30 years, then all of a sudden, you find out that you have HPV, it doesn't mean that your significant other has cheated on you. Your body can hold that dormant HPV in your body for a long time, and then all of a sudden it can become activated. Like I mentioned before, your immune system could become decreased, could be from stress, could be from another illness, could be anything that decreases your immune system, and that could spark reactivation. So it doesn't mean that your partner is cheating. If you have genital warts, it doesn't mean you're going to get cervical cancer. Like I mentioned before, there are only about 12 different types of HPV that can lead to cancer. There are 12 different types that lead to genital warts. It's very, very, very rare. And I've heard some sites say it's impossible if you have genital warts to, for it to become cervical cancer. So just because you have genital warts does not mean it's gonna transform all of a sudden to cervical cancer. And I think that's it for the rest of this video. If you have any questions or would like further information about any of the topics that we discussed today, please feel free to let me know. Like I mentioned in my first video, if you didn't get to see it, I'll say it here. I am doing these videos for you. I want to help you, and maybe you don't need my help, but you might know somebody else who does. I'm going to be doing more videos on HPV and cervical cancer coming up in the next few weeks, and I hope that you join me and subscribe and like the video. And if you didn't find this particularly helpful for you personally, but maybe you know somebody who has HPV or know somebody who has cervical cancer or is a survivor or something, and you think that they might be finding something that will help them and something that's beneficial for them, please share this video because I'm the, out there to help people like you or someone that you know. So share and let's all get through this together because one thing I can say is you're not alone. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye.